Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you are all doing great, and we're glad to have you joining us for this uh, series on the book of Genesis. Hopefully, you've been able to attend or watch online for our Sunday morning services. As uh, I'm getting towards the end of the book of Genesis, it's just been a great study. And as the graphic here shows, uh, Genesis is a great book, and it's about really about the uh, working of God in the world. You see portrayed here, uh, God has worked. He worked in, during the time of Adam and Eve. He was working through that debacle. He also wor was at work to bless people's lives during the time of Noah and the great flood. And that's what Genesis is really all about. It's about God, and it's about God working in the hearts and in the lives of people. And more specifically, as this graphic here shows, Genesis, beginning in chapter 1 even, is about God and his relationships with people and people's relationships with people. And really, that is what all of us are interested in. And here's why we all should pay attention this evening. This is going to be a relatively short lesson, so hopefully you'll stay tuned in here and you'll have a good devotional in your home. You'll talk with your kids. Husbands and wives will talk with one another and use what we talk about here because this is very, very important and something that matters to all of us. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever read this book, but this is a great book right here called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now, this is a book some people make fun of. Well, yeah, but actually, this is a very good book. I've read it many, many times. It'd be one that's good for you to win. Uh, this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, was first published in 1936. And it arose out of a, uh, a series of lectures that was given back in 1935. Uh, during the time of the Depression, when everything was not going good, but yet people would come and pay good money and stand with standing room only crowds for hours to listen to Dale Carnegie talk about the art of human relationships. This book has sold over 30 million copies uh, over the years since its publication in 1936. That just tells you what people are really interested in. Uh, in fact, Time Magazine in the year 2011 gave a list of the 100 most influential books of all time. And this book that I just mentioned, How to Win Friends and Influence People, was number 19 on that most influential list of all time. Uh, they did a survey when this book was first published back in 1936, and they were asking people... What is it that you are most interested in and you would like to learn about? The number one thing that adults are interested in and they want to know about is their own personal health. And I think we could all identify with that. Guess what number two on the list is? Number two is, how do I get along with people better? How do I mend relationships? How do I have better relationships with people? And what they discovered was that there was no textbook at the time back in 1936 for the thing that people are the second most concerned about. There was no textbook on it. Actually, there is a textbook on it. Uh, the Bible is actually the best textbook on human relationships. Uh, I love this great verse in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Paul said, everything that was written in the past, and he's talking about the Old Testament scriptures, it was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement that they provide, we might have hope. The things that were written in the Old Testament, and for our purposes here, specifically the book of Genesis, God had them recorded and inspired and preserved for us for a reason. Because there are things there that are meant to teach us and to encourage us. Great things that we can learn from, both in a positive way in the book of Genesis and also, in a negative way, we learn also what not to do. Uh, at the very beginning of the book of Genesis, you remember in Genesis chapter 3, uh, we're going to learn that rebellion against God destroys all of your human relationships. You remember in Genesis chapter 3 with Adam and Eve, everything was good with them and God. Everything was good in their relationship with one another until they sinned, until they rebelled against God. And then it caused a big division between them and one another and also between themselves and God. 
And this great verse that's also portrayed up here in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 7, uh, listen to what this says carefully. This is a verse we know well, we quote it, but it has uh, very profound implications for our relationships if we think about it. Here's what it says. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sins. I want to talk about what that verse is saying regarding our relationships. It says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. In other words, when we walk in a way that pleases God, when we walk according to what he says for how he wants us to walk in his word, when we do that, that's when we're going to have fellowship with one another. That will lead to us getting along with one another well in our relationships. And the opposite of that is also true. When we don't do God's will, when we don't follow what his word says, when we don't act and behave and talk the way that he wants us to talk in our interactions with other people, guess what? Fellowship with other people is going to be, uh, it's going to be distant. There's going to be separation there, and we're going to have problems. Uh, very, very important for us to keep, on, keep in mind. And I love what this graphic says. Rebellion against God destroys all your relationships. And I think we would all agree with that because we've all had personal experience with that. And then it also says humility heals them. If you're having problems in your relationships with some people right now, in fact, I, I'm 100% sure that applies to everybody. We all have problems in that area from time to time. What's going to heal it? Humility. We need to, first of all, look at ourselves and admit where we are wrong, where we have not followed what God's greatest textbook on relationships is, the Bible. And we need to be humble and confess our sins and then go about doing what God says to heal those relationships. And Genesis is really all about relationships. You have a list here that I've compiled. This is not a comprehensive list, but it's a list that we all know about of relationships in the book of Genesis. Adam and Eve, their relationship was great at one time and then it was tarnished. Their relationship with each other was tarnished and the relationship with God was tarnished because of sin. Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain killed his brother Abel. Why? Because he wasn't doing what God said. He wasn't living according to God's will. Abraham and Lot had a strained relationship, but Abraham took the high road. And then there's this relationship between Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. Hagar, you remember, was the handmaid of Sarah. And it was Sarah's idea for Abraham to impregnate Hagar in order to have a son because they both didn't really believe that God was able to carry out his promise. And that brought all kinds of negative consequences because they didn't do what God wanted them to do. Isaac and Rebekah is an example in Genesis chapter 24 that I preached on several weeks back of a, a, a good relationship. Uh, is how to go about having a good relationship. How do you initially get into a good relationship? And this was about how Isaac had uh, relied upon God and God's leading and the angel of God who went before Abraham's servant to go and find a wife for him, Rebekah. Just a powerful, powerful passage in Genesis chapter 24. And then right now what I'm preaching on and will continue to preach on for the next couple of weeks is the strained relationship between Jacob and Esau. And it was strained because of Jacob's own sin. I mean, Jacob is one of the great people in the Bible who was later renamed Israel. But Jacob, uh, he was, a, he was a, a piece of work. Uh, he was a con man. He was a, a somebody who would trick you and deceive you and con you out of everything you had. And God had to work on him and change him, and he did. And his own sinfulness caused terrible uh, conflict between himself and his brother Esau. And then we have Jacob and his two wives, and that was the result of bad relationships with his uh, future father-in-law, Laban. Uh, Laban tricked Jacob, you might remember, which was probably payback for Jacob tricking his brother Esau out of the blessing and out of the birthright. And uh, he, was, he worked all these seven years in order to marry Rachel, and then the father-in-law gave him Leah, and then he had to work another seven years to get Rachel. You remember that? Strained relationships. And then... Uh, here in a couple of weeks, I'll get to where I preach on Joseph. You talk about just a, 
a powerful example for uh, how to go about uh, healing strained relationships. Joseph, just such a positive, positive example for us. Uh, what I'm going to preach on next Sunday, and I hope you will be in attendance, or if you're not able to be here personally, you will make sure you tune in online. I'm going to preach from Genesis chapter 33, and what that is all about, it's the story of Jacob and Esau, and it's all about repairing relationships. In fact, what I'm going to be preaching on the, throughout the rest of the book of Genesis, as we go through the Jacob and Esau story and into the Joseph story with his brothers, is about repairing relationships. And I think this is something that we all need to listen to. We all need to hear this. Um, in fact, I know that we do. You know, when you're a preacher in a church of this size, you you find out a lot of things and you hear a lot of things, and most of what you hear about and find out about is about strained relationships with people. Uh, some of you watching right now, I'm sure, can identify with this, and you're wondering, why have my relationships with people at church or at work or at home or wherever, why have they gone bad? We can learn a lot from listening to the greatest textbook of all time written on relationships and how to have good relationships and when those relationships have gone bad, how to repair those relationships. And that, of course, is the Bible. And it all starts with this foundational book, the great book of Genesis. Uh, how does this all apply to us? How does it apply to you? What God is telling us to do, I love this great verse in Romans 12, verse 18, which sums up what he's saying in Genesis and throughout all the Bible. He says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with all men. Isn't that a great verse? Notice he says, if it's possible. You know, sometimes it's not possible because some people are so hard-headed and they're so ungodly, you just can't have a good relationship with them. Uh, however, my experience has been, most people are not like that. Uh, most people will have a good relationship with you uh, if you take the initiative. Yeah, you have to take the initiative. It says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. You can't help what other people do, but we can control ourselves. And quite honestly, sometimes the problem is us. Uh, we hate to admit that, but sometimes the problem in relationships with people at church, at work, in our home, our spouse, our husband, our wife, our children, our employer, our employees, whatever the situation may be, oftentimes the problem in the relationship is, you know, it's me that needs to change. He says, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with all men. Take the high road, go the second mile, to use some biblical terminology, and try to live at peace with all people. Most of the time, it will actually work. Not all the time, if other people are so hard-headed. But don't let the problem be you. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. And I know what you're probably thinking, because I've thought the same thing, and I was thinking this when I was putting this short little lesson together. How do I do that? How do I live at peace with all people? And you know, there's a verse in the Bible that encapsulates it very well in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is another book that's all about relationships. In those 31 chapters of Proverbs, God has left for us a record, inspired record, of how to get along with people. And this verse in chapter 16, verse 7, really sums it up. Uh, notice what he says, just a great verse. When a man's ways or a woman's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. You want to know how to be at peace with people, how to have your relationships restored and to have good relationships with people? He says, when a man's or a woman's ways please the Lord. If you want to get along well with people, if you want to repair relationships right now, maybe that have gone sour, how do you do it? He tells us right here. Get your ways to please the Lord. And so what my admonition to you is on this Sunday evening, and what God's admonition to all of us is, and this is why he has this verse preserved in his word is, make sure that your ways please the Lord. You can't control what other people do. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. And the best way to do that is to make sure that your 
ways please the Lord. And so as I prepare to end this lesson, I want us all to think about uh, what are your relationships with people like? Are your ways pleasing the Lord? If your ways are not pleasing the Lord, it's simple. Humble yourself. Repent. Ask for God's forgiveness. And go and take the high road. And as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. Try to get along with people. You may need to go to someone who you have some tension with, whether that be maybe someone at church, maybe your husband or your wife or your children or your parents or a co-worker or a neighbor, whoever it might happen to be. And uh, try to live at peace with them. Now, maybe you've already tried that and it didn't work. Well, sometimes it doesn't work. But make sure it's as far as it depends on you. You're going to live at peace with all people. And the way to do that is when your ways please the Lord. And so I hope this message this evening has been a blessing to you. I hope you'll take it to heart. And I hope that we'll all practice the truths that are contained in these verses and in the great book of Genesis. I hope everybody has a blessed day. I hope uh, this beginning to your new week goes well. And I ask God's blessings on you. Everybody have a great night. We'll be talking to you again very soon.